what do we know about how climate change is impacting the jet stream? Okay, so there are some things that we know very clearly and there is also a lot of uncertainty mm -hmm. around this question. Um, and the reason mostly why there's a lot of uncertainty is there's a lot of sort of competing factors. So, one of the things that affects the strength of the jet stream, the main thing that affects the strength of the jet stream, is the change in temperature um, as you go towards the poles. And so it's, it's warmer towards the equator, it's colder towards the poles, so we have this temperature gradient. And it's that temperature gradient that actually controls the strength of the jet stream when we're talking about this sort of mid-latitude, um, the jet that affects us here. And with climate change, we know that we have what's called polar amplification and particularly Arctic amplification. Stop for just a second. Arctic amplification, let me explain. The Arctic is warming much faster than the rest of the planet, four times as fast in fact, and Arctic amplification is the reason for it. As the planet warms, sea ice melts, exposing the darker ocean beneath it. Like wearing a black t-shirt on a hot day, the darker surfaces absorb more energy from the sun, causing more heating, and you guessed it, in turn, more melting, so on and so on. That whole process is what we call a feedback loop, and it's the main driver behind sea ice and permafrost melt, sea level rise, and changes to the jet stream. So let's go back to what we know powers the jet stream, and that's a big temperature difference between the poles and the tropics. And if the Arctic is warming and getting closer in temperature to the tropics, that temperature difference is getting smaller and the jet stream is getting weaker. In theory, the weaker the jet stream, the more likely it is to loop and meander rather than flowing straight and fast from west to east. In theory, that would lead to more extreme weather. But that's just one piece of the puzzle. But that bit of the puzzle isn't completely clear. Um, and so there's, there's two things that make that more complex. The first thing is this thing with the Arctic amplification is what's happening at the surface. But as we just said, the jet stream is really happening way up high in the atmosphere, sort of nine kilometers above where we are now. And if we look there, actually, we have potentially more warming in the tropics than we have up in the poles. And so now we're actually strengthening that temperature gradient. Interesting. So we know that the Arctic is warming faster at the surface. Yes. We don't necessarily know that it's warming faster up high. Correct. And so we've sort of got this tug of war of what's happening at the surface and what's happening higher up in the atmosphere. And so that makes it kind of harder to know exactly sort of where is the jet slowing, where is it speeding up, and how is that going to impact these meanders, these loops, these weather, these a big weather system that cause these weather extremes. We do know some of the reasons for the Arctic amplification really is what's happening in the Arctic, but this connection between the two, it's not 100% clear which direction it's going. And some reasons Research says it's going from the Arctic to the mid latitudes. Some research says it's going from the mid latitudes to the Arctic. My perspective is it's probably a bit of both, and both these things are happening, and that's what makes it a really hard question to really tease out exactly what these impacts are. And also an exciting area of research. Exactly.